Hi, my name is Dagan Kettles, and I'm going to talk to you in this lesson about JavaScript objects. As you go through this lesson, listen for vocabulary that's important for any object-oriented programming languages that you work with, such as class, object, instance, property, attribute, variable, method, function, and constructor. All right, to start off this lesson, let's talk about a problem to motivate it. Um, imagine that there's a bank and the bank has a website and this website is programmed in a language like JavaScript. On a banking website, you're likely to be displaying information about things in the real world, things like clients and things like accounts. Now, if you've been doing JavaScript for a little while now, you know how to set a variable. And as you think about something like a client that might be displayed on a website, maybe they're looking at their bank account statement you realize that a client is not a simple variable. A simple variable might be first name or last name, but a client is something that would have lots of different attributes associated with them. So think for a second about what those different attributes might be. Maybe just pause the video for a second and ask yourself that question. Okay, for any given client, you might want to store some information about their name or their address or their phone number or their account. So how would you do this? Well, if you've learned about arrays in JavaScript, that would be one, one way that we could create a single variable that would hold a bunch of pieces of information about a single idea. So for example, here we could have our first client called a client one, an empty array initially. And then when position zero, we could put their first name, position one, we could put Spencer, and so on and so forth. So this could work, although as we need to update certain things like the first name or the last name or the account number or possibly even add in something new like an email address, it might be hard to remember what exactly goes in position two of that array. So there's got to be a different way, a better way to do this. Well, we can draw inspiration from another programming language. Uh, this is a what's called a structure in the C programming language. And just in the abstract, it looks like this. You use the keyword struct, and then you put the name of the thing that's going to have a bunch of properties. So in our case, this would be an account. And then where it says attributes, these would be variables that belong to that particular thing. And in other programming languages, not JavaScript, you oftentimes specify what kind of data it is, like a string or an integer. Continuing on with C, if you wanted to create a storage um, object for a client, you create the template for that with this syntax. And in this particular client, it's gonna have a first name, string of characters, last name, string of characters, phone number, and then an account number of type integer. So that's just a template. It doesn't do anything yet until you start to create instances of this thing. So here you declare the variable. Your, your variable is going to be client1. Client1 is a variable of type client. And then down here you can see how you can start setting the properties of that variable. Client1 dot, you know, s first name equals Damien. Client1 dot s last name equals Spencer. So this looks a little bit more intuitive than the way we were doing things with arrays, wasn't it? And we could use this functionality in bulk and it starts to look pretty good. For example, if you declared several different variables of the exact same type of structure, then as you um, set their attributes one after another for different ones, it, it seems like a really good and easy thing to do and it's really easy to recognize what you're doing. So we just did this in a banking context, but oftentimes in graphical contexts like video games, it's also really helpful to be able to create variables in this way and then set their properties. So imagine, for example, that you had a bunch of different robots in a video game. Wouldn't it be nice if you just set up some template for what a robot is supposed to be like, and then you set some individual characteristics that sets them apart? Or here's another one. Maybe you had a video game that had a bunch of birds in it. It'd be nice if you could just have a bunch of different variables that represent different birds, and then you could set some different properties about each of them. Okay, so that leads us to the idea of classes and objects. A class in, in programming 
is a set of code that defines what the variables are going to be like that get created from it. It's like a cookie cutter, or in this case, it's like a mold for a gummy bear. It describes what the gummy bear is going to be like, but the class is not the gummy bear itself. It's just the structure, the parameters, the uh, attributes that it's going to have. Uh, over here, this is an example of an object that gets created from a class. So it's a real thing. Once you've set up the template for your objects, you can create lots of different objects and all of the objects can be different. In terms of vocabulary, sometimes um, we will refer to an object as an instance of a class. So it's a unique variable that represents something created from a predefined template or a mold. All right, let's go ahead and move forward and do this in JavaScript. So first, uh, go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. Find yourself a folder where you're going to put that code. Uh, for me today, I'm going to put it in a folder that is going to be <laughs> HTML objects. And I'm going to create a file. I'll call it objects.html. And then over here, I will use Visual Studio Code's uh, feature that allows me to just type in an exclamation point, hit return, and now I've got uh, boilerplate information for an HTML document. I will shrink up some of that information on the left-hand side, and I'm ready to get going. So let's go ahead and create a class and then an object in JavaScript. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a, put a script tag here. And I'm going to use the keyword class, and then I'm going to be creating objects of type client as part of this problem. So I'm going to call this class client. And then I'm going to declare the variables or the attributes that will be part of every single client. So I'll say s first name, and I'll say s last name, and I'll say s phone number, and I will say I account number. Okay, so this is the structure for every single object, object that's going to be created of type client. One thing that stands out as you look at this is that usually when we declare variables in JavaScript, we preface it with the keyword let or var or const, and with, op, with classes we don't do that. We just leave it all by itself. All right, let's go ahead and now take use, make use of this and create some variables that are objects of type client. So I'll say let, and I'll use Hungarian notation. I'll say O for object, client1 equals new client. And let me just take a break here to add in some comments here. So I'll say create a variable of type client, and I'll say up here, I'm going to create an instance of the class or an object from the class. And up here, I'll just put in another comment. I'll say create a class to make client objects from. Okay. So I have set aside a variable that's of type client, but I haven't set these attributes yet. So let's go ahead and start doing that. I'll say o client one dot, and then I can access that attribute as if it were a variable, first name equals, and I'll call this person's first name Damien. And then I'll say o client one dot last name, and I'll make that Spencer, and I'll say o client one dot phone number equals one two 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 three 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 four 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 four. Then I'll say o client one dot account. Um, I 
guess I should have done a count number, but anyway, good enough. And I'll say just a random string of numbers and call it good. Okay, um, I've created one client. Let's go ahead and create a second one. I'm gonna copy and paste all of this information that's right here. And then shortly afterwards, I'm going to display it on a web page. So I can't have two variables of the same name, so I will call this second one client two. And I'm gonna put information about Luna Martinez in here. So I'll say first name is Luna, last name is Oh, having a hard time there, Martinez. And we'll go ahead and change this, 555, 6666, and then just make up some other number. Just some random characters will be just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and go up to the top and create an HTML tag, which is going to hold the content of these variables. I'll say, paragraph ID equals output. So using our DOM, document object model, I can now refer to this particular HTML element by its ID, which I've called output. All right, let's go down and at the end of my script, I'll say document.get element by ID and I'll call, I'll reference output. And then to add HTML to that tag, I will use the inner HTML attribute or property. And I'll say equals, and I'll say first name. And then I'll say o client one dot s first name. And I'll keep on going like this. I'll say the last name um, holds o client one dot s last name. Put a little line break on there. And maybe I'll just take a little, little break right here and see if this is working okay. So I'm gonna click on this right click and say open with live server, which is a plugin that I have installed. It's going to open up a web page and I'm excited to see that this is working just like I'd hoped. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in the rest of our object information to that HTML page. Um, so other things I need to add are the uh, phone number, And before I put the line break there, let's go ahead and do o client one dot s phone number. Another line break, and then we'll do o client one dot i account for the account number. All right, let's see how it looks. I'm going to look over here. Everything came out perfect, fantastic. Okay, I created two different client objects, so let's create. Uh, let's go ahead and display the second one on the screen. I will copy this text, and I don't want to completely replace the contents of that HTML tag, so I will do plus equals, and then I'll put uh, a couple line breaks there in HTML and I don't want to refer to the first variable again. I want to refer to the variable representing the second object. I hit save, and I come over here, and everything came out perfect.